Mikin, hi. Thank you so much for joining us on the road less traveled. I'm most happy to have you for many reasons. You know, you're my favorite. But beyond that, I feel early conversations with you led to us starting this series about how we could break down the idea and notions of conventional success, have people talk about more interesting and different things they've done, and then hopefully, you know, start off in, on an entrepreneur's journey or at least be entrepreneurial. So I'm very happy to have you as a guest on this. Thank you, Sandhya. You are super kind. Uh, I am excited to be here. I have no idea what's coming up, but it is the road less traveled. So let's it go. It is the road less traveled and, and, and we want to hear your journey. I want to go back in time, make into, you know, your vision for Udyam says you want to make the entire nation entrepreneurial. But what was that point for Mikin, you know, uh, you have a really good job with Flipkart, one of India's first unicorn companies, you could you had another long journey with them. But what's that point that Mikin said, you know what, I want to tread a new path. Can you take us back to that point? Okay, so a little bit context. And then <clears throat> I tell the specific incident. So there is an incident. Sure. Um, I had, um, I had joined to lead technology at Flipkart, so ran engineering. Uh, some of my funnest years, uh, hiring amazing engineers, uh, struggling uh, in building the team, but the team that got built was, was fabulous. Uh, I think my proudest achievement. Uh, then while uh, as in one of the individuals that had gotten hired, Amod was such a brilliant technologist uh, it was very clear that he would make for a far better CTO than I could be. So I was happy to hand over the reins to him. Um, and then I scratched my startup pitch within Flipkart by running two startups. Uh, one in the payment space called PayZippy and the other in the digital media space where we were selling ebooks and we also tried, and tried to sell music. Uh, if all three of those shut down. Mm. Uh, right. And I, I think some of them shut down after I left them. And, uh, sometimes I'm like super proud. Ki achha. Had I only been there, maybe they wouldn't have shut down. Uh, I don't know, but, um, the, so while I was having fun with building them, I think 10, 11 months in, um, Sachin asked me, keep making, not able to figure out HR, uh, we've been struggling. We've hired three leaders and none have worked and. Uh, we're now bottlenecked on HR. So, karega kya? Uh, and I said, uh, sure, why not? Right. And I think the... Sorry, quick question here. At this point, you had no specific HR profile or experience. None. Okay. Right. So the reason and yeah, and maybe even before I come to the Udyam road less traveled, maybe here is another road less traveled where you don't generally see a technology head saying yeah. yes to doing HR or a founder asking the technology head that, hey, will you do HR? Um, I think the, so even as I spoke about my technology role, you heard me speak that I was most proud of the people, the team. Mm -hmm. um, so some of it came very naturally to me. Um, I think at Flipkart, I had, I was probably the last person to get hired without an interview process. And then I shut the doors behind me. <laughs> 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 that now on we are going to have uh, structured interviews, um, help set up the basic ESOP policy, uh, performance management and promotion frameworks, both for uh, both for the tech team, but also broadly. And this was while I was the technology head, right? So I helped, uh, and at that stage in the company, it didn't matter who you were. You like we all did everything uh, to ensure. So, so some of those bits and uh, just my focus and work on culture probably uh, got uh, Sachin and Bini to think about me running HR. And, and I think exactly those bits, like my joy with people possibly uh, allowed me to say yes. Um, and even though when you think of it from an outside, right, like you're a, in a unicorn where tech is like the revered function, uh, right. And to move to HR, which is like, uh, as one of the first years, as in a fresher in my team asked when we announced this change in the all hands at Mekin, that sounds like a demotion. Why would you take it? 
So I, I'm just glad that people at least had the openness and courage to ask these kind of questions. That's the culture that I believed in. And, um, and then I told him that, yes, industry-wise, it would be seen as a demotion. Uh, but I feel I can, I can actually make that be different. Uh, right? I can do things differently. Uh, I can, we can think about HR in ways which are different from how the rest of the world thinks about HR. So, so I said, yes, and took that on. Um, yeah, too much uh, of whatever, uh, you can almost call it arrogance and belief that I can learn this and solve this. Um, and I did learn and solve quite a bit in the first year. Um, but I found it super taxing. Um, this took an uh, emotional toll on me. Right? Like, I think with technology, the easy part is that you make decisions and if the decision goes wrong, you reverse the decision. Just for context, how many people did you all grow in this one year period when you took on the role? And uh... So we went, uh, the organization grew two and a half times from about uh, three to 4,000 to about nine to 10,000 full-time employees and about 35,000 people off roles. Wow. Um, so crazy. Uh, right? And my one advice to anybody listening is like, if you are uh, running a startup, which is more than 500 people, do not try and more than double in a year. Uh, it, there are basic laws of uh, social sciences that you will run into and break. Um, but anyways, uh, you, I can only see this with hindsight. Uh, I didn't know it then. So then we just went ahead and did it. Um, and I think, uh, so besides, besides the learning and figuring all of that out, uh, in, with people decisions, you can't reverse them. Right? So the cost of an error in people decisions is very high. Yeah. Uh, it may not be high for me personally, but it is very high on the individual. And unfortunately, I, I have not been able to dissociate myself from that. So that means that... Um, I would end up thinking a lot about people decisions. I would end up uh, being too burdened about it. So, so while I would say we did enough things and we succeeded um, in that stint as HR, uh, it weighed me down significantly. Uh, so it was a combination of these that I'd been doing this for a year and a half or a couple of years now. And uh, then this specific incident happened uh, where um, there were 10 of us, the Flipkart leadership team, planning strategy for Flipkart. And, um, and one, of, one of them uh, was helping us through a visualization exercise. Right? And the person asked us that, okay, 10 years later, what do you imagine the world to be? What do you imagine Flipkart to be? And what do you imagine yourself to be? Right? And, and see what, how does this connect and so on. And, and that visualization was... I just could not see myself as part of Flipkart 10 years later. And that was very, very rude awakening for me. Uh, I had, um, yeah, I, it was my baby. I'd built this company from scratch. And you had no inkling of this before that moment? No. Uh, yeah, maybe I had fatigue and I had, like, I was exhausted and tired and uh, feeling pressured with uh, like a lot of emotional burden of decision making and learning new things and so on. But I, I didn't expect this, right? which is why it was very rude and very, um, yeah, very shocking. Uh, uh, so, so that bit, which is, hey, for an entity, which I still fumble instead of Udyam, I said Flipkart in my previous call. Uh, I, like it, it's my baby. Uh, and and then to experience this, that, hey, I can't see myself as being part of this next 10 years later, um, led me to think, like, hey, what's happened, right? Is it because I enjoy creation and small teams? And is it because now Flipkart is too big? Is it because now I'm in the HR role? Um, and, and I went through that thinking, but in, interestingly, um, that thinking didn't stop there. It got to uh, much deeper in terms of why did I even join Flipkart, right? Or what do I get out of uh, whatever I've done? And why have I done what I have done? Um, 
so this this silly questioning or introspection went on for like three or four months uh, and i think one of the things that i realized was that okay uh, i had done things because that was the norm right that is what success was defined uh, that's how family thought of success that hey after college i had to get a job so that i could start helping my dad who was the sole bread earner and in a middle class family that was important uh, so you got a job and you got a well paying job and then you succeeded in that job um, i took i took risks as they can be called like leaving a yahoo job to join an early stage startup or leaving a startup to join flipkart at a very early stage uh, i don't necessarily think of them as very large risks they were very calculated and they felt right in a lot of ways and in hindsight they seem to have worked out beautifully um but all of those were around things that i was good at or i could do well not necessarily around what i cared most about mm. so so then this quest on okay what did i care about uh, and and then another couple of months and finally zeroed down on i cared about people i i cared about people and i cared about people succeeding right and not to say that i don't enjoy tech or i don't enjoy data or product i have had i have loved those journeys i still i'm still delighted to be in a conversation with techies and discussing tech and product and stuff but i felt like what i really really enjoyed was people and people succeeding um so that is what in some sense cleared my mind and paved my way for eventually getting out of flipkart and uh saying that hey i want to spend time in education um because in some sense i saw education's role as enabling people to succeed very simply uh, right there uh, i've written there was a time when i my mind was muddled about because i was hearing so many different things about education that what is education for uh, but to me now it's very clear it's very simply it is about enabling people to succeed in whatever they want to succeed right it, uh, whether it is economic whether it is around their passion whether it is around like social success and fame like enabling that uh so so that's what led to that shift happening um let me pause there if yeah i questions. want to before we get deep dive into the birth of udhyam these four months that mikin has really it, it's a deep introspective period you've realized something that you didn't you hadn't previously realized and as you begin articulating this what is your world around you the, your support system uh, is this an internal process are you able to engage with family friends and talk them talk about this to them or had it been a largely a uh, lonely journey mostly lonely um i think after i developed some of the clarity that hey i was pulled towards uh people succeeding uh, i could discuss that with my wife and like she was uh she's been super supportive uh, she would not get very very involved uh but she would be she would say the most simplest and most obvious things like hey if that is what you care about do it uh, and it it sounds common sensical <laughs> but it still requires someone to say it yeah uh, yeah so i think uh, she was that uh, she was that enabler um after but the initial journey of introspection was mostly lonely and mostly internal um yeah and then you get to this point you have certain internal support how does udyam happen uh mekin yeah so i hadn't made up my mind in terms of what i wanted to do in education i think what i cared about was large scale impact mm. that that unfortunately having worked at flipkart ya yeah, or other places scale had become a non negotiable so so in terms of focus on large, like and i as an engineer uh decided to first look up data that okay what does data about education say what's working what's not working and i read the asr report and the status of education report that pratham brings out and i was blown away i didn't know anything uh, right had you asked me to guess any number in there i would have been wrong by more than 50% what mm -hmm. percentage of indian kids are enrolled in primary education i would have said maybe 50 60 
as in india had indian government had solved for enrollment 97% plus maybe 99 are now enrolled in schools uh, right but how much they learn what they learn etc those are different challenges but i'm like oh i didn't even know this basic geography of education if you can call it that uh, or the history of education and i realized that it would be silly uh, uh, to jump in with an answer or with a solution like oh like any other startup that hey i have an idea i have an app i will change the world uh, so i decided that i will i will take a break here i will take a gap year and i will explore education so i met a lot of people from people running montessori's teachers people running large universities large for profits in education uh, students so over 100 people working in the sector in skilling in education all across and i would have conversations with them about uh, tell me about what do you think about education and they would be taken aback and they would be like what do you mean education like be more specific mm-hmm. primary education secondary education skilling uh, because like education is too large and like whatever you want to talk about right i want to learn what you want to talk about so um, so very interesting conversations uh, read a lot uh, i i enjoy reading and in some sense the flipkart 7 years had been like a reading hiatus there was mm-hmm. no time to read uh, which i which i feel is silly i didn't make time to read um uh, but uh, gobbled up a whole bunch of things uh, around learning and education i was very so over time the problem statement became how does learning happen uh, like i was trying to figure out like okay what is the core essence and then we will figure out how to deploy it and and i struggled with finding an answer i was reasonably disappointed with what neuroscience had to offer that mm-hmm. we still don't know what happens in our brain when learning happens um similarly most of the educational research and uh, educational psychology uh while amazing theories and i personally connect with a whole lot of them i realized that there was no experimental evidence behind any of them right? so there is this brilliant thing called the bloom's taxonomy that mm-hmm. talks about at the bottom there is just reading and next is remembering and then is to understand and then is to analyze and then is eventually to be able to create like okay it seems seems like a fantastic theory but uh, where's the proof uh, and there looks like nobody is nobody is really tried to figure out where's the proof um, it just is common sensical so we accept it um, it's, it's just like a norm that like, oh monday to sunday we have seven days and saturday sunday we take off and it's just a norm and but also because learning's been defined by such a confined parameter of point a to b in a sense but not really all the branches and the nuances right yeah yeah uh, i still don't think we have uh, we have very good ideas or very good understanding of exactly what happens in the process of uh, like overall learning while what you said sandhya is like understanding its branches i think that's far too complex even something as simple as from point a where you don't know how to cycle to point b where you know how to cycle mm. what really happens Uh, is very very hard mm. and it's extremely hard to understand like once you know how to cycle it seems so obvious right uh, like you can't then explain it right that Absolutely. what was that process and and you feel frustrated with your kid that hey why can't you balance <laughs> <laughs> like you were there one time where you struggled to balance you fell but now you feel frustrated because your child is unable so that what is really happening in that journey in that process is not as explicit and not as well understood um so i spent uh, i would say two internships if i can call them that i used to say i used to call myself the fly on the wall mm. where i thought there was learning happening right so these were two places where um, the input or the students were socially written off but the output or the outcomes that they were able to create were socially very highly regarded and just to step back a little bit this was important because most education in india uh, i thought was about filtering mm-hmm. is about selection absolutely like you if you clear an iit and so i i don't know if i can trust the learning processes in an iit and when i've heard people talk about very few of them talk about the learning processes uh, that hey because of this i learned this 
right it's uh, it's very implicit so and in the early years the filtering is even more basic mm-hmm. i i remember as a kid if the teacher liked you you automatically got put in plays and sports and all of that whether you fit in or not so never yeah. mind what we lead to oh absolutely right there is research about for example the elder kids uh, so in the us it is december bonds end up doing really really well because uh, they are the largest by size Uh, they are the oldest in a class uh, hence they are more confident hence they get put in more sports more they get selected to represent the class and so on and it's a re- positive reinforcing circle yeah right? uh, and the folks who are january born struggle a lot so so there's enough american research around it there's enough indian research around it but yes this plays out significantly um, but yeah back to these two places uh, non descript places uh, one of them became a little more famous later uh, it's called uh, project defi define education for yourself young entrepreneur back then abhijit was 24 year old uh, fresh from vit he was running this uh, interesting uh, setup where he would have young people come in and tinker with laptops and make things uh, and what would start with imitation of what was being told on a youtube video or arvind gupta toys and then we'll go on to modification and we'll eventually go on to them creating stuff and in that process they learned a lot so so i i was an intern at these couple of places and post which uh, i think uh, i was able to figure a couple of things out that uh, some of my learning principles got uh, solidified crystallized and validated Uh, that how does learning happen uh, i still i won't claim i know the answer but my theory and it is just a theory or hypothesis is that uh, that for learning to happen you need student autonomy or students to be engaged you need uh, learning by doing you actually need to do stuff uh, and the doing has to be connected to the real world right it can't be just uh, abstract so so i had these three principles and then i was also thinking about the macro problem around jobs uh, the fact that we don't have jobs as, as a country and uh, education still measures itself on jobs that when you see an iit or an iim in the newspaper or in media is because oh somebody got a one crore job or we had 100% placements on day one but there aren't enough jobs so on one end you have education system trying to get your job and on the other hand you have jobs for maybe the top 3% the top 3% do really really well uh, because there are great jobs and orbit shifts happen but for the rest we just shrug our shoulders and say too bad you were not in the top 3 but guess what only 3% can be in the top 3% and to me that's massive wastage of human potential uh, this is so much that is doable because what our education system measures is so narrow absolutely and somewhat silly um so so these realizations then hit together around and converged in this idea around entrepreneurship or entrepreneurial mindsets um actually before i jump into that right there was also a personal uh, incident where i had gotten into this mode of being an intern and mm-hmm. was enjoying it a lot uh, right that i had no responsibility and i had i would just go hang out at a place learn observe make notes analyze come back do my own notes and reflections and stuff and uh, and it was also a time where i really connected with my son with my daughter i had connections but my son was born after flipkart had already start scaling and i was almost not there when he was growing up in the first 5 years so i could This connect with the him. time in a sense yeah yeah but then one fine day my wife like shook me up is like hey what's up with you like you keep talking about learning by doing what are you doing <laughs> the penny dropped <laughs> and, and she was harsh she scolded me uh, and she doesn't do that uh, often uh, right and i think that propelled me into uh, converging my thoughts like i was i was in some sense building a lot of these theories but like okay how do i now put this into action that's what led to this idea around uh, entrepreneurial mindsets and entrepreneurship in education coming about uh, right that those three principles that i said are the three things that a, a good entrepreneur always does uh, autonomy because nobody tells an entrepreneur what to do 
by like an entrepreneur is all about doing uh, they don't get paid for thinking uh, and it's all connected to the real world so between like what learning involved and what a good entrepreneur was these two were very deeply integrated for me um, and the fact that india did not have jobs so we need more entrepreneurs and entrepreneurial people led me to start with them with okay uh, and the initial idea was which came I, I actually don't know exactly how it came and in the interim i had researched quite a bit globally so there were similar ideas that i had seen uh, but what i had thought of was a much longer like there's junior achievement there is a uh, young enterprise youth enterprise in london they do a whole bunch of stuff but i thought of like a six week program where four week students are doing a real business uh, and and then yeah basically me and my friend got together put down a basic curriculum i looked around asked people found a facilitator the first project ran during the first project i saw a lot of magic happen like what the students were able to do blew my mind um this is you've already set up udhyam and no, now you this is before no, okay. this is so the first project started even before the entity was born it was okay. a project it was an experiment let's okay. see what happens when you try and do this um right and the thought of creating udhyam was there so it's not like the entity was not in my mind at all um but the entity got set up on 30th of march uh, but the first project had started already in like early march and we'd been speaking to stu- uh, schools even before that and developing curriculum even before that so december jan is when supriya myself christy shivani some of us had started working on this more as an experiment and a project no entity nothing um, and i think yeah, maybe i will narrate one instance that like solidified in my mind that this is um uh, this is something that i'm going to do for a long term um so we had this project where for the first two weeks we were running classroom sessions and uh, activities and simulation and after that was the time where students got to decide what business do they want to do in their own teams and we would give them uh, 10000 rupees each right for them to try something um and on that day of them coming up with business ideas people came up with different business ideas one of the team came up with the business idea of selling watermelon mm. i was heartbroken right like after spending two weeks if all i have been able to inspire you to do is to sell watermelon I've clearly I've done a horrible job but autonomy so can't say no so theek hai fine go sell watermelon uh here's the money do what you want and try it and um and i was a little upset uh, i was like okay this is not going anywhere let's see what happens uh on the fourth day uh this team and i remember salman was one of the leading students of that team uh came back very very happy and showed us what they had sold they had found and sold yellow watermelon mm. um i didn't know till then that yellow watermelon existed i had never seen it in my life uh, i then researched it and it has medicinal value and whole bunch of other things but for them it was like hey this is a cool new thing and that sells and and i think this this piece about like if you have student agency right they are able to think out of the box and they are able to figure out like hey what can we do in watermelon and that's the whole idea of entrepreneurship anyway right exactly exactly right so i think with that autonomy and agency even though like i may have been disappointed about the idea of watermelon but then to see that oh they were able to find yellow watermelon and sell your yellow watermelon without anyone else telling them they figured it out themselves that oh this could be done like that is what reaffirmed my faith that boss this is something i'm going to do now for a long time right like just giving students the opportunity to think and decide on their own to play with it to experiment for some time is so powerful uh, so i think it's that day that that ha huh, i will there will be a company and all of that got registered a lot more deeply in my head i love that story mikin i have two questions here one linked to uh what you said about reaching out to students what was that like because in a sense who were you right to be this person to go out and reach so w- was that easy or did you just say i have to do this and you did you did what it took ha huh. so 
somewhat of the latter but what really helped me was those 100 conversations i had had mm. right so without really meaning to i had actually created a network in education uh, right my purpose was not to create a network my purpose was but to it learn. happened uh, but then i knew people and people knew me and i reached out that hey this is what i'm planning to do i spoke to i remember very well i was meeting this friend of mine sridhar ranganathan who runs cludon uh, uh, which is uh, in his office uh, and the previous meeting was uh, ashok kamath of akshara and their meeting was delayed sridhar said hey why don't you come in and meet ashok and stuff and then i met ashok and like any silly entrepreneur blurted out that this is what i am looking to do do you know anyone and he said hey here is this lady jaya george runs crystal house why don't you call her up Right. Wow. I called Jaya George and Jaya said, why don't you come and meet me in one or two meetings? Like the first project had gotten finalized. That She had agreed that Crystal House can be the place where we will do our first pilot. Um, so it was similarly for facilitators. As I was building curriculum, I, I talked to multiple people, tried working with working part time with about five or six people. Uh, some of them stayed, some of them didn't. Uh, and then one of them, and then I asked them that, hey, who is a, who's a great facilitator? And then one of them said that, hey, there is this lady who was in Hyderabad. She is moving to Bangalore, but I've heard amazing, like every time I've worked with her, she's been fantastic. So I reached out to her. She said, oh, I am doing my own startup, but uh, you know what? I like your idea. I will have some time. So I will do this for you. She started. And then by the time she had finished this project, uh, she was like, hey, this is far cooler than what I was doing. I'm going to join. So she joined along with the two other people that she had hired in her team. Uh, they became part of them. Uh, so yeah, it, it was very, I would say, not planned. I, I have a simplistic way or, or a simplistic explanation for that. I always, from conversations I've been having, right? You find your purpose, you put in the hard work and opportunities get created yeah yeah uh, one of my friends and neighbors somil puts it very brilliantly he says uh, luck is your luck is equal to uh, the effort you put put in uh, multiplied by like the storytelling you do around it like the number of people who know about it like if people if more and more people know about it you keep getting luckier and luckier yeah. right? because then people are like oh if you are doing this you know you should speak to this person uh, and I'm glad you touched on that because Mike Moritz, I was listening to a recent interview and he says, you know, it may seem surprising when you ask me what is the single most important thing I look for in an entrepreneur when I'm investing. He says a leader should be able to tell a story because you have to convince somebody to follow your dream. So I'm glad you touched on that. Absolutely. Like an entrepreneur has to convince at least three set of people, uh, right? Which is basically your core customer, your employees or potential employees and your investors. And that is after you have convinced your own family. Absolutely. <laughs> Which is your big starting point. Mikin, I want to talk about, you know, again, for the purpose of this conversation and people who are listening to it, they want to understand those first hundred days, right? Of You've set this entity up. You've been a serial intern. You have some uh, idea that you want to uh, for what you want to build. What were those first hundred days of of an entity and taking that forward, and the challenges that come with that? Yeah, yeah. So I think maybe I'll break them up into pieces. Uh, the first piece was like this first project that is going on, uh, like being actively and deeply invested in it. So. Uh, the visual is that this school starts at, I think, 8 in the morning or 8.30 in the morning. And this is uh, up north Bangalore. I would start from my home at 6.30 in the morning. Uh, I would pick the three other people on the team. So Priya, Shivani, Christy on the way. And we would go to the college, go to the school. Uh, on the way, we are preparing. Um, we would do the sessions, do everything. On the way back, we are de debriefing and Typically, we'd get back home and then get back on calls again uh, to discuss like, hey, what is the plan for tomorrow? What do we do? And so on. Uh, so this is like active product development happening every day. Mm. Right? So it's you have something, you have a design in mind, but you are constantly reworking it uh, on every day. 
So I think that was that, hey, what happened and what is the new reality? And based on that, what do you want to do tomorrow? Uh, so that's one part of it, right, which kept happening. Uh, I think there was a second part of it, which was talking to and meeting a lot of people uh, and talking to them and then them suggesting that, oh, why don't you do it here? Why don't you talk to this person? Uh, this person could be a good facilitator. Uh, so, for example, like the second facilitator that I found is somebody who teaches theater uh, in a school, mm. right? And uh, he got excited about what we were doing, and um, and he was like a fourth level connect, right? I I asked someone, they said, hey, why don't you talk to this person? They said, hey, not me, but why don't you talk to this person? And then this person finally connected me to Chanakya, and I'm like, okay, Chanakya, and then. I tell him the story again. So it's a lot of storytelling, right? That, hey, this is what I believe in. This is why I'm doing it. Are you interested? Uh, so did that a lot, which, which is what led to more schools and more facilitators slowly starting to come in. Um, right? and, and I think then by the time you, you've been through the first 30, first 40, 50 days, then you start thinking about that, okay, this is now taking shape, uh, right? How do you structure this? How do you organize this? How do you do it better uh, and more of? So you then start putting basic structures in place that uh, we need more work to happen in curriculum. We need more work to happen in finding more schools. So Shivani, can you do this? Supriya, can you do this? I will go do this, so on. So, so a little bit of structuring, even with like a three or four people team, uh, basic division of labor and uh, figuring that out. Um, so I think that is primarily what it looked like. And we worked out of uh, Yogistan most of the time uh, mm. in Ranagar. Uh, amazing food, great people, a uh, lot of mosquitoes in the evening. Uh, so <laughs> we would end up like finishing off work by about 6 p.m. Uh, so we would start early and so on. But, but yeah, we would work out of cafes. We would work out of Cafe Terra. Uh, for the, we didn't have an office for a long time. Uh, and only much later did we get an office. So, so the typical setup y things actually happened much later. Uh, it was a lot of what you would call product development, finding partners, uh, and, and then just going after and then building a team. Those three things happened quite a bit. Did you have early heartbreak in this, uh, making it good, it's not necessarily bad. I mean, did you fail in something that you were convinced about? And you didn't see anything particularly wrong with it, but it didn't work out like that. And yeah. how did you work around what an incident, uh, one of the anecdotes? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, one other idea that I was actually very passionate about was an idea around apprenticeships. Right. And, um, and I was keen to figure out apprenticeship to small business entrepreneurs, right? to a small shop or a small, uh, a small company if you could find apprenticeships and for that um, i wanted to do uh, like i wanted us to figure out stuff not in like bangalore bangalore but maybe like hey, slightly outside so we figured uh, we did research in mysore uh, and in suburbs of mysore right? and um, i was very very upbeat about it that hey for a business it's like cheap labor mm. uh, and for a learner it is like work experience and exposure to doing things that they have had no uh, exposure to. Uh, and when the early conversation results came back and I was part of a bunch of those conversations, um, yeah, I was very disappointed. Right? From both sides, I saw a very, very cold uh, reaction to the idea. Right? That, hey, no, I don't want another apprentice because six months later, he's going to open a shop next to mine and he's going to become competition. Uh, right? I people who, so, so that forced me to think and introspect a lot more about why people didn't have employees. Mm. Right? Why a lot of Indian small business entrepreneurs actually don't have employees. You either have family yeah. or you have no one. Uh, there is so, this fear of competition. That's one of the Right. So, so my next step was, and if I had had, uh, if Udyam had not started and in this shape, if this product had not taken off, then I was l looking at uh, businesses which are not scared, right? businesses which are already at a place where, hey, it doesn't matter if you open another one. 
if you can then so be it uh, right if you can do better than me that that creates great. a larger market in a sense yeah so finding those businesses so like a vidyarthi bhavan mm. uh, being a place where you can have apprentices right and then how could you get that happening and so on so studying that so that's where i would have probably gone or that was one other idea i wanted to explore but but this at least was a heartbreak like i remember those mysore trips very very uh, clearly in my head right that both the journey to and the conversations there and i was struggling with kannada i like i could understand kannada uh, but communicating was really really hard uh, so so priya would do a little bit of it couple of other people would do a little bit more of it but um yeah i think a uh, lot of that was a struggle uh, mikin i know you know at game we keep having this conversation specifically uh with you uh but i want to talk about it in your perspective is there an entrepreneurial trait you see in yourself that's held you in good stead one more than any other when you look back and you can i that you can identify i think uh two come to my mind um right uh first is first is very simple and very easy one is just uh, like uh how maybe they connected like i can learn right i have in some sense this arrogant belief that i can learn uh and i think that's help that's it didn't matter whether i knew facilitators i knew school i'm venturing into education i'm getting into hr i believed i could learn right and and i think an underpinning of that uh, is incidents that come back to me from my first job at yahoo uh, where there was this one time where one of the yahoo founders was visiting our bangalore office uh, is david filo uh, he's the technical founder right and then there was a business jerry yang who was more the business oriented founder right and we were having some discussion around uh, filo used to in some sense personally approve new allocation of machines right and uh, i'd start discussing over lunch about uh, what was the th- thought process behind that and and i didn't realize but at some point that got into like a very heated debate between me and him i am this 22 year old fresh from college uh, right and like there's like the rest of office was just watching this ping pong match <laughs> uh <clears throat> and then people who joined alongside me and even others asked me that hey how could you do that right and i said what was wrong with that like did i was i disrespectful or anything he's like no no you were not disrespectful but like like 22 year olds generally don't do this generally don't talk to a founder like this i'm like to me it wasn't about him being a founder and to him as well he's solving a problem and i am trying to figure out how is he solving it and i am hopefully probably seeing another way uh, and maybe i am wrong and he'll tell me that uh, or maybe we will together arrive at something so so this bit that i generally don't get awed by power or by people like oh like you might be whatever founder and a billionaire and it's like okay but when we when it gets down to talking about specific aspects i am actually happy to engage in and have a logical conversation uh, with almost anyone uh, yeah. right and some of it comes from a desire to learn but some of it is also like hey but it might be like probing or really wanting to understand I, actually that's one of my favorite things about you i i think i've met very few people who are able to i don't know if you see it like that but i see it like that you take yourself away uh from and you you just want to see w- how you can problem solve it doesn't matter whether it's you or or someone junior or someone senior you're looking at it as a problem that needs to be solved and um yeah so those those are the two adjectives i use to define myself a uh, problem solver and a learner that is who i think i am lovely has there been someone who's been an inspiration to you mickin someone who's perhaps an entrepreneur or just been entrepreneurial and you look and you've somewhere imbibed or observed qualities you you respect yeah. so many people 
right? I think one or maybe the first direct answer is that no one person, right? But many, many people and for their various aspects. So the first person that comes to my mind is this guy Bharat Vijay, who had started Yahoo India and was a very early Yahoo employee, moved back to India to start up the Yahoo office. Um, his degree of care for people uh, right, like, uh, is, continues to be aspirational for me. Right? This is, a, um, I'll also tell you a spooky story. Uh, but uh, so this is a person who, there were about 75 of us. I joined, when I joined, we were about 20, but we grew to about, there were 75, 80 till he was leading us. And each one of us had like a US manager. We were almost like uh, individual pods working with US teams. And he, as the India site head, knew everybody's work fairly deeply. Right? Wow. He, would, he would make time, he would understand, he would come in, problem solve, had long conversations. Um, so, yeah, so I think specifically on his both problem solving uh, ability, but I think his care for people. So, so the one time when, uh, this is 2015, uh, yeah, so, yeah, something somewhere around 2015, I hadn't spoken to him for almost like four years. Um, I had an 11 a.m. meeting with Sachin to tell him, uh, I had set up that one-on-one, I was going to tell him that, hey, I intend to leave. Uh, right at nine in the morning, I get a call from him mm. saying, Mekin, are you okay? Uh, like, wow. I, I, this is spooky, right? Like, I have, uh, I have not spoken to him for four years, and he said, No, I just felt like calling you. Uh, I thought I'll check on you. Are you, is everything all right? And I said, and then we had a long conversation. I explained to him how the last four years at Flipkart had been. He's like, obviously, I've been reading up about the news and following and stuff. So amazing. But uh, he was unconvinced why I should leave. And then slowly over the hour, he got convinced why I wanted to leave. But but yeah, I think on on people, on his care for people, like I look up to him. Like similarly, in terms of effort and working hard, like Dravid's been an inspiration. Right, so I've read stories, met people who know him closely and stuff. And I've met him a few times, uh, but he continues to be an inspiration. Um, there are a whole bunch of other people uh, who I've not met, but people like Feynman, like the way he teaches, uh, the way he tries to simplify everything. Like, hey, if you can't explain it to a five-year-old, then you haven't understood it. Um, so a whole bunch of what a Feynman says uh, resonate very deeply with me. Um, so yeah, there are these different people in their different dimensions who are huge inspirations for me. And there have been many, you said. Yeah. Uh, Mekin, is there one thing, I know you're still early on in your entrepreneur journey, but when you look back, and again, keeping in mind people listening, is there one thing you would say you wouldn't do or, or ask young entrepreneurs to keep an eye out for? Huh, I, I feel it is, um, yeah, maybe first I will, what's coming up most strongly is what I would strongly recommend more people to do. I have been able to do it a little bit, but um, which is to keep learning. Uh, it, I think uh, very early in our lives, we start optimizing for financial capital. Mm. And I think that is useful, that's valuable. Um, and I don't want to comment on like different people, different situations, you may have significant value or less value for it, uh, right? But I think for a large number of people, I think it takes up much larger share of their thoughts and their thinking than what I call human capital, which is your personal capital. Like what are you learning and what are you capable of and what can you do? I think investing in that, growing that, like, Answering the question, which company will I learn the most at versus earn the most at when you're leaving college? Uh, and that helping you decide where you, excuse me. Uh, I think that bit um, is one thing that's, that I would recommend uh, to, uh, to a lot of the entrepreneurs. Uh, but give me 30 seconds. Let me think about the one thing which I've, which I have, 
faulted on and i would want people to keep an eye out for huh, i i think having clarity on what what culture or what behavior is unacceptable in your organization early on uh, and being able to take strong corrective measures uh, sooner rather than later uh, is something that i wish i had done right i would recommend that people do it Uh, so people are deliberate about hey what behaviors do they want what culture do they want in their organization and if you are seeing something that is that is not acceptable uh you take corrective measures you give feedback you coach people eventually if, if it's not working out you let go of people uh, rather than not and i wish i had done that more aggressively than i have I want to end our conversation on a slightly lighter vein. Huh. Uh do you have a you know post or oh, not post covid but a a lockdown hobby that you took time out for something you enjoyed uh Oh, oh yeah. Last 6 uh, months. Uh at least two one is um we as a family got together to read and uh right so we read the Harry Potter series together. Lovely. so that's like me reading aloud to my kids uh, and my wife reading aloud to uh, all of us um and that habit continued to continued through harry potter then we finished in clares now we are just finishing up percy jackson um, nice. so so i think that has been fantastic it's given us like we now talk in characters from these places <laughs> and we use jokes and uh, so that's been fantastic um i i learned and uh tennis was found to be the safest sport in covid and our apartment complex is allowed tennis uh, i think about a couple of months back so i have learned tennis and that's been become a hobby and it's the one time where i have been cursing bangalore rains because <laughs> <laughs> that means no tennis for the next few hours are you team federer or team nadal oh federer 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 yes me too <laughs> federer for all time yeah. my last question Do you have a quote you live by, uh, Mickin, or one that inspires you, or a thought? You know, yeah, some I think I think a thought is easier. So the thought that hey, we are where we are because that's all we've done, right? And everything can be made better. So, uh, so everything can improve or everything can be made better, is is a thought I live by. I and I can't think of a better way to end this conversation than with everything can be made better. Thanks Mickin. Thank you so much. Thank you Sandhya. Thank you for hosting me and thank you for making this conversation happen.